Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Wild at Art Winners Reveal and Artist Celebration. Bronte. And I'm Lola. And we're your Wild at Art hosts for today. I'm the Digital Marketing Lead at ACF, and I was lucky enough to see so many of almost 7,000 entries come in this year, which were all inspiring, creative, and challenged all of us to think differently about our unique and threatened species and people's impact on them, positive and negative. I was even lucky enough to see Lola's entries for the last two years in a row, which were amazing. Thanks for having me as a co-host. I feel so privileged to be here. And I'm so glad you got to see my cassowary Hecuba and my Gouldian Finch, which I entered this year. We saw over 20 different Gouldian Finches come into the competition this year. They're so colourful. That's especially why I love them. I got involved in Wild at Art two years ago when I decided I wanted to make a change. And I thought to myself, what's the best way I can make a small change? And the answer was art. And that is exactly what I did. Over the next hour, we will see many of the many of the stunning artworks of Australia's threatened plants and animals created by kids right across the country, including 110 finalists and this year's winners. Before we begin, I would like hand like to hand over to Josie. Alec, ACS First Nation lead, a proud Kurama Mathu Denera woman, for a welcome to country. Thank you so much and uh, thank you everyone for coming here. Today I'd just like to pay my respects to the, all the elders all around the country from everywhere that we are calling in from today online, uh, past, present and future and uh, especially our emerging artists and um, pay our respects to all the people that um, are looking after the country and looking after our plants and animals and uh, all the kids and their beautiful artworks. So thank you very much and uh, welcome everybody. And uh, I've got my tap sticks, of course, and when we do a welcome, I love to uh, sing a welcome song, which is a river song, and it's in my language, um, Injibani and Nalama. So here we go. My daddy bangari na wundu ala, babu no anga wundu ala, why gun and gari ma wundu ala, wundu ala wangan daddy. Why do the water gun and gari ma, why gun and gari ma, gun and gari ma, why do the water gun and gari ma. Wundu ala baba no wangai. Wundu ala baba no wangai. Wundu ala baba no wangai. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Josie. We'll see Josie again really soon when she presents the first ever Wild at Art Awards for Best Artwork by an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander child. We're also really lucky to be joined today by a number of other special guests. We've got our Wild at Art founder, Lorraine Bauer, and judges, Lindy Wood and Bronwyn Brown, ACF's CEO, Kelly O'Shaughnessy, and our campaigns director, Paul Sinclair, and the Australian Government's Threatened Species Commissioner, Fiona Fraser. First up, we have our CEO, Kelly, who I'm going to hand over to now. Hi, everyone. It's so wonderful to be here again this year for Wild at Art and to be astounded by the art that you have all done. Um, makes me wonder what I was doing when I was your age. I wanted to use this time to tell you three things about nature, um, the Australian nature in particular. So the first thing is it's unique. You know that. I know that. We all love it. You, we have animals that you need to see to believe, like the platypus. We have um, we have ecosystems that you can see from space, like the Great Barrier Reef. And um, we have this amazingly beautiful, unique place that is like nowhere else on Earth. The second thing that we don't think about quite as much, actually, is nature is our life support systems. As humans and all living things depend on nature for every breath we take, every drink of water that we drink, um, the, the soil that grows our food and the bees that pollinate our crops. 
Um, so nature underpins all life on earth and we should protect it because it's unique and beautiful, but also because it's essential to our lives. And the third thing is that Australian nature is globally important. So 70% of plants and animals in Australia are found nowhere else on earth which is amazing and actually makes us, Australia, one of the most mega diverse um, nations on earth and very important. So if we, if, it, if species go extinct in Australia, then the whole planet loses uh, an incredible species and we don't want that to happen. I think a lot of us are here today and, and you have done your artwork because you know that nature is in trouble. Um, we know that Australia very sadly is a leader in the extinction of particularly mammals um, and that nearly well more actually now than 2,000 species uh, and ecosystems in Australia are threatened with extinction and I know that sounds bad and it let's face it it is bad but we should also know that um, we actually know how to solve that problem we know how to end extinction and that is by protecting the home of our species, the places that they live, which we call their habitat. And they're really the rivers, the bush, the grasslands, the oceans um, that our beloved species and ecosystems live in. And right now, and Paul Sinclair will talk a little bit more um, about the actions we're taking to protect and reform the national laws that will create a nature positive Australia for all of you kids to enjoy, like I have from when I was a kid until um, me being a little bit older now. Um, so I, I, I'm really thankful that you've done your artwork because the biggest barrier really to getting uh, the end of extinction and getting these strong actions that we can take in Australia is that most people don't understand that nature is in trouble. Australians look out their back door or where they go camping at summer or to the beach, to the bush, and they see koalas and kangaroos and magnificent places, and they don't understand that nature is in trouble. And so that's where you come in. Your art has um, shown us about nature, has uh, created art around threatened species uh, and threatened places. And I want you to know that not only does your art inspire people like me and everyone at the Australian Conservation Foundation, I want you to know that your art goes all the way uh, out into the world because we put it out into the world on, on social media and people vote for it, but it also goes all the way to Parliament House in Canberra. And our national government, our political leaders, look at your incredible art and by doing so they understand that nature is in trouble in Australia and they have the power to do something about that. So that's what you have done by creating this incredible artwork. Um, and we at ACF cannot thank you enough for that. And I wish you all the best of luck for today. Yeah, thank you so much, Kelly. I really agree with that. We can't help something that we don't understand or that we don't know. And I truly believe these kids can help all these vulnerable by all these vulnerable species by exposing how endangered they are. Um, now is a chance to see some of our 110 wonderful finalists artworks. Can we please play the first reel of finalists?
Wow, weren't they beautiful? Those pictures were really, truly amazing. I can't believe the judges even made a decision. I don't think I'm cut out to be a judge. Now, I'm going to hand over to another special guest, Australia's Government's Threatened Species Commissioner, Fiona Fraser, who will speak to us about Australia's threatened species. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Lola. I'm really delighted to be joining this event to celebrate Australia's amazing plants and animals and all of you talented young artists and, and writers. Some of the stories are really amazing as well. This is one of my favourite events of the year, so I'm just so thrilled to be back and, and looking at all these art pieces of art again this year and really, really impressed by the, the creativity and the really incredible skill that has gone into each and every creation. So, um, and, and so many beautiful written and, and visual artworks that are just dedicated to Australia's threatened species. So I just want to talk a little bit about threatened species. Um, my, my job is to be the Australian government's threatened species commissioner. So it's both, both a really hard job because we have lots of challenges, but also a hugely rewarding job because I get to work with Australia's threatened plants and animals and also the amazing people who are, who are working to raise awareness and to, to support their recovery as well. So as Kelly said, Australia is one of the most biologically rich and diverse countries on earth. That means it's got many more unique and special plants and animals that men, than many other countries. Um, and so I guess one of the questions I wanted to put to, to the artists on the line today and, and other um, students is how many different types of plants and animals do you think we have in Australia? So put up your hand if you think it's maybe about 2,000. Okay, put up your hand if you think it's maybe about 100,000. And then my last option is put up your hand if you think it's about 600,000 different plants and animals. So the truth is we actually don't know the answer to that question, but it's probably about 600,000 plants and animals, which, which is a huge number and incredibly, incredibly impressive. And some of them scientists haven't even described yet. So we've still got a lot to learn about a lot of them. So sadly, over 100 of our plants and animals um, in Australia are now extinct. So these, these are species which existed for many thousands and in some cases millions of years in Australia, but have entirely disappeared in the last 200 years. So for some, like the Tasmanian tiger or the thylacine, which many of you will have heard about, this was due to hunting. And this is thankfully a threat, which is, which is no longer a pressure on most Australian plants and animals. Many of our plants and animals were driven to extinction by threats such as habitat destruction, like cutting down native trees, or invasive species like feral cats, which can eat native reptiles, native birds, native mammals. And today we've got, as Kelly said, around 2,000 plants and animals which are threatened with extinction. And these problems, these threats still loom large for many of those, for many of those plants and animals. So we, all of us, every one of us in the room today has a really important responsibility to protect and recover these plants and animals. And to do this, we need really strong law um, to protect them um, from future actions. We need to reduce things like the impacts of climate change. And we, to do this well, we also need to help those plants and animals that are threatened by creating things such as new habitat for them, making sure they don't get eaten by cats and foxes, making sure they've got the right burning in place. And also sometimes when populations are really low, um, supporting extra breeding um, in places like zoos or, or, or botanical gardens. So, so there are really big challenges that, that face us, um, but I feel really reassured um, knowing that there's such passionate and intelligent young people caring for our threatened species. And all of you are already making a big difference by by learning and helping others to learn more about our threatened species and the threats that they face through your artwork, you're getting more people involved in protecting our threatened plants and animals. And this, this um, in my mind, is, is especially important for our lesser known or our lesser loved threatened plants and animals who don't get much attention, but are equally as valuable and can play a really important role in the environment. These are the creatures like some of the plants, some of the invertebrates, um, such as insects and spiders, which people don't think so much about as, um, as uh, for example, koalas, which get a lot of attention. 
So with that in mind, I was really excited to see the submission by 11-year-old CO, which showcased the remarkable pink underwing moths caterpillar stage. I think there's some pictures which um, might have been floating around about, about CO's picture. So it's got, you remember it if I describe it, it's got two really imp impressive eye spots and two rows of teeth spots between the two eyes forming a really realistic skull pattern. So that's it. See it? Look how cool is that? <laughs> so um, yeah, great job, CEO, for catching, um, capturing this caterpillar so, so beautifully. I guess the other thing I wanted to, to mention is that um, ways that you and your friends and your family can help in threatened species recovery. So there's really simple things that you can do. Um, start a nature journal and report what you see in that journal. Learn more about what, what's in your environment. You can also actually help science by reporting what you find through, through apps such as Frog ID um, and Butterflies Australia. Who owns a pet cat or a pet dog? Hands up. So they're really fantastic creatures to have in the house, aren't they? But it's really important that we're responsible pet owners. So if you've got a cat, keep it indoors. If you've got a lot, dog like I do, keep it on a lead, especially where in your, your, if you're in nature or you're at places like the beach, so you can protect shorebirds like the like sandpipers and hooded plovers. Plant native trees. So get into the garden with your family and help to plant some native trees that create habitat for wildlife um, that live close to your home. So together, we can all make a difference in helping our threatened species to recover. And I'm really confident that with such bright young people like yourselves helping, our threatened species are gonna be in safe hands for the future. Thanks all artists. Back to you, Lola. Um, thank you for that. I think that was um, really important to tell everybody. Now it's time for to see even more finalist artworks. I don't think I'll ever get tired of seeing those artworks. Next up, we've got ACF's campaigns director, Paul Sinclair. We've been working incredibly hard this year on focusing on the government's work on new strong nature laws. All the kids' artworks have gone to speaking up for that cause. So without further ado, let me introduce Paul Sinclair. Thanks, Bronte and Lola, and thank you um, to all folks who have joined us here um, today for this amazing event. Um, I'll talk a little bit about um, hearts and art. 
Um, so yeah, as we have heard from Fiona and Kelly, Bronte and Lola, having um, strong laws that protect nature are really important. Unfortunately, the laws that Australia have don't protect nature. They in, uh, are not stopping the destruction of the homes of many of the animals that are depicted in this art. So we can either accept that and say, okay, we're a lot really busy, or we can speak up and try and change the way those laws are put together and make better ones. So uh, we're trying to make better laws and um, no matter if you're seeing someone being treated badly if, or you're seeing nature being treated badly, we've all got an obligation if we care about those things to stand up and to speak up for people and nature if they're under threat. And um, I wanna talk a little bit about why this art is so important in doing that. So a lot of the artists have sent their work into members of parliament. And one of the great things about our democracy is we have to try and convince and persuade the people who are elected to our, the Australian Parliament to be brave and to change our broken environment and nature laws to create better ones. So this art that has been sent through to members of parliament, I think has started to shift some of those politicians. Art and heart are two words that are very closely uh, connected and it's an important reason. I think one of the things when we look at this art, no matter what your opinion about politics or the way the world is, we immediately share something. We look at this beautiful art and we share something. And that shared love, that shared appreciation of something beautiful is the foundation for having a conversation about how we can make a better world together. So the art that I've seen today has lifted my mood. It's made me feel better. Um, it's shown me beauty that I might take for granted. It's shown me how to see the world in a different way. It's sparked my imagination. It's made me think that maybe things can be different to the way they are. And I, I, just a secret I'd like to share with you, the people who stand for election to try and get elected to the Australian Parliament, they're people like you and I. They have hearts, they have minds, they have imaginations, they have places and species they care about. And by sharing those stories with each other, we can spark and strip away the defences that sometimes the politicians have and connect with their heart. And by changing their hearts, we will shift their minds. And by shifting their hearts and their minds, we will shift and create better laws. So about 22 MPs, received um, a wrote back to our artists, thanking them for their magnificent artwork. A whole heap of them also shared the artwork with their voters and their electorates and their communities. So I think there's no doubt that this art has been really um, influential. One of the things that I find in, in my work is that often artists, no matter what their age, can underestimate the power of their art and their voice in creating change. You are powerful. Alone, you're amazing. Together, you are extraordinary. You have to believe that you can change the world. And this art is helping people see uh, the value of this extraordinary natural world that we have in front of you. So thank you for your help in creating new nature laws that are going to protect and replenish these amazing speech, species and creatures that we have um, in Australia. Thanks, Bronte and Lola. Back to you. Thank you, Paul. I, I think it's very important that everyone is speaking up for our unique wildlife in Australia while these new laws are being developed. Before we hand it into the awards, we, we have one last video of our finalists to show you. So let's take a look.
almost the time that we've all been waiting for. But just before we announce the winners of the 2023 Wilder Art competition, I'd like to say a huge thank you and congratulations to all of the kids who submitted artworks this year, almost 7,000 of you. I wish that you could all be winners because what you're doing to raise awareness of our threatened plants and animals is outstanding and you should all be so, so proud of yourselves. I'd also like to thank the parents and the teachers that helped all the kids get involved and provided knowledge, guidance and inspiration this year. Big thank you as well to our main partner, Zoos Victoria, who hosted the first ever Wild at Art Day at Melbourne Zoo during the competition and donated our prizes. And of course, our judges who volunteered hours and hours of their time to make sure each artwork was fairly considered and our wonderful guest speakers who have joined us today. All right, it's time, here we are. I'm going to hand over now to Lorraine Bauer. She's our Wild at Art founder, and she's going to be announcing the winners of the group work category and a special environmental hero award. Hello, everyone. Um, I have also been asked to give a very brief um, introduction to the history of this competition, um, which I'm really happy to do. Um, the idea of the competition was born in 2016 during a conversation between myself and forest campaigner Susie Russell. And with the help of the small grant, a group of us were away. We ran the competition in 2016 and were astonished to receive almost 600 entries, uh, beautiful, beautiful entries. Um, but I just want to give, um, tell you a little story uh, about a mother that came up to me at the end of that first exhibition and told me that her son, a little boy of about six or seven at the time, um, how much he had loved uh, painting the threatened regent honey eater and how important the competition had been in his life. Um, she also said that he would always love that animal and it would become his totem, she believed. And that really had a huge impact on me because I realised that um, this, this competition could be very, very important in the awareness, not only uh, of the people who are viewing the artworks, but um, of the people who are making the artworks. Um, so I think as children grow up, there are repercussions as they want to protect these species and the environment in general. And I think it shines through the entries in Wild at Art, now run by ACF um, since 2021. In 2023, there were over 10 times the number of entries we had back there in 2016 in that first competition. Um, that little boy is now 14. And while I've lost touch with the family, I'm pretty sure that he still loves Regent Honey Eaters and his love continues. And so, so do, does the love of thousands of children, parents, teachers, siblings, and members of the community uh, that have been impacted by the competition. Um, it would be great to say that things have turned around for all our threatened species, but as our um, previous speakers have said, um, for others, extinction remains a real threat. But I think this competition gives me particular hope um, that the prospect of change is gonna come through this new generation who demands change for the better. Um, and just a word about the amazing, magnificent artworks um, that the children have inspired us with their talent um, and astonished us the best entries are full of creativity, um, engendering emotions in the viewers. And I think children's art um, shows us things in unexpected ways and it really is quite different to um, the kind of art that we um, have come to expect from adults. Um, and I just want to thank, particularly thank, the 260 teachers or program managers uh, throughout the country that have set this competition as part of a term project. Um, it's such an added degree of difficulty, um, helping a whole class produce artworks and then the writing and research involved. Um, and um, 
as has already been mentioned, thank you to our, our wonderful judges, Lindy, Bronwyn and Kylie, um, and to the team at ACF, whose enthusiasm has been undiminished. It has been really a pleasure to work with you. Um, I especially want to mention Joel Marlin Tribe, Rasco Antic, and last but not least, Hansika Bagani, who never let the ball drop, remained courteous when faced with my chronic lack of digital expertise and answered emails at breathtaking speed. Thank you for your commitment to this project, um, which I have no doubt will have a lasting impact on the care of our precious native species. Um, so I just now want to go to uh, the first of the um, uh, of the uh, prize winners. So the first place in group work um, and is um, Tam Art Studio, a normal day in the ocean. Um, it is a normal sunny day, but life in the ocean is anything but normal. At first glance, it looks like a large number of sea creatures having fun, but the viewer is soon aware that each species is confronted with its own nightmare. Rubbish, nets, hooks, plastic, pollution from runoff. This artwork manages to include a vast array of elements and still feel cohesive rather than crowded, as it is held together by strong composition and bright colours and very, very clever placement of the many species and dangers. 31 students worked on this for four weeks. Congratulations to you. Um, the second place um, in group work is um, Green Sea Turtles uh, at play by Wentworth Falls Public School, five to six, uh, class five to six. Um, in this floaty composition, with a limited but effective colour palette, sea turtles of various shapes and sizes glide convincingly in different directions above a soft collage ring. Keeping the turtles in greys and umbers was a great idea, as they are understated, effectively merging with their seascape rather than dominating it. Each turtle has its own individual character, but they blend together in a harmonious whole, giving it a playfulness and inviting the, the viewer to look more closely at the details. Congratulations to you, uh, Wentworth Falls Public. There's um, another um, award that um, ACF have been giving, and this is for environmental heroes. Um, these, every year there are children that go above and beyond in their desire to help native species. And this year's uh, award is for kindergarten boys at Wyvern House, Newington. These very young boys collected rubbish every day and then they made artworks using it, depicting first a clean and then a polluted sea to show people how rubbish can end up. They wrote messages to their school community on how not to pollute. Some of them made sculptures and posters of the tawny nose sharks, the ink tooth shark and northern river shark and sharks caught in nets. Their teachers said that through this process, they have become driven to let their viewers know we must keep our seas clean. So very, very hearty congratulations to you um, boys at Wyvern House. Thank you. Thanks, Lorraine. Now, our next speaker would have been Lindy Ward, one of our judges. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to join us today, so it's my honour to be able to present the Best Plant Entry Awards. In first place for Best Plant Entry, we have Cranbrook Bell by Chloe, age 10. Beautiful. Congratulations, Chloe. I love the use of colour in this one and the muted background as well. In second place for Blessed Plant Entry, we have Hidden Purple Gem by Deepa, age nine. These are both so stunning. I particularly love the plant ones because they don't often get as much of a look in as our gorgeous animals. So they're always some of my favorites to be looking through the plant ones. Lola, who's our next speaker? 
Now, I have the pleasure of introducing Bronwyn Brown. One of our judges, Thanks for, thank you for being here to announce some of our winners. Hello? Can you hear me? Bronwyn, yes. yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I would like to congratulate the winner of the regional art uh, prize and her name is Lahana and she is 12 years old and she has chosen as her animal the Dunart and she has chosen to draw it which is a very compelling way I think of getting the message across and the fragility and the uh, of the creature and the the way she's matched that with her wonderful shading on the head and the the eye which um, allows us to really feel its vulnerability it is on the verge of extinction so congratulations to lahana the second prize Second place. Are you can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Okay. Um good. Um it is sometimes known as a marsupial mouse and it is nocturnal. And um I've I think there is something special about when you choose such a small creature to just fully express the danger of uh, extinction that this um, this creature is facing right now. Um, the second prize is going to Shane, who's 11 years old. And this... This particular work has a vibrancy about it. There's um, interesting in the way that he has combined paint and markers and having a feeling of the community or a family of, of gliders with um, a good use of foreground and background. And the foreground, again, the eyes express, um, I think for us, the connection and through that, the emotion that we feel about the, the sugar glider. Um, they're just enjoying their day in the habitat on a beautiful day um, in various poses. It's, um, I think the use of the way Shane has done the tone in the leaves um, is very, very interesting and, and really brings out the habitat, the importance of habitat by putting it into the, the artwork. The, the, um, the markers for the texture, creating texture on the branch and those strong claws, almost like uh, he's just hanging on there. So well done, Shane. And I think Sorry it- Sorry to interrupt. Was... Beg your pardon? Sorry to, Sorry to... to... To interrupt, let's welcome back our Threatened Species Commissioner, Fiona, Fiona Fraser, to announce some more winners. Thank you, Lola. I'm feeling extra lucky this year because I think I'm getting to announce three categories and they are some um, very, very cool pictures as well. So um, the first category I'd like to announce is first place for best artwork ages five to seven. And the winner is, should I wait for the picture? The winner is going to Lillian's Barbie of the Bush. There we have it. Can I see it properly there? Yeah, oh, my God, isn't that fantastic? So I, I really love this. I love how how bold and vibrant Lillian's artwork of this major Mitchell cockatoo is, and they're such a, such a funky little bird, aren't they? Um, so really great use of colour and I was particularly impressed um, by how Lillian has captured that delicate relationship between threatened species and fire 
which plays a really complicated um, role in our landscapes and is a topic which is really close close to my heart. So I hope all of you online, if you haven't seen one already, already get an opportunity to see one of these pink beauties one day. So Lola, should I just go ahead and announce the, um, the runner up as well? Yes, please do. Okay, great. So I'd now like to announce that the second place winner for this category, and that's being awarded to Lena's Please Stop Hurting Our Home, uh, which is going to pop up in a sec, I think, and it is going to be something I saw at Phillip Island at Christmas. It is these penguins. So what, what a really great message about the importance of protecting habitat for our threatened species. I think Lena has done a great job of capturing um, and conveying a real emotion in this piece. So her colour palette and expressions of the penguins re really show a sadness. Um, I was really impressed by the attention to detail in this piece as well. And you can see how Lena has painted each of those feathers individually when you can see that blown up version there. Re really impressive work, Lena. Thank you. Lola, will I go on to the next, um, next slot of awards now? Or would you like to? Yep. Yeah. yeah, you can go. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lola. So the next the next category is first place for best artwork for ages eight to ten. And the winner goes to Marco's piece, Ode to the Ocean. Look at that. That is just <laughs> so amazing. So on, on top of being a really beautiful and realistic artwork. I think the way that Marco's depicted the coral rising out of the leatherback turtle shell is a really beautiful way to represent how, how species habitat is, is so important to the survival and livelihood of a species. And the watercolour black background is just so perfect as well. Um, congratulations, Marco. Really, really impressive work. Then I'd like to award the second place for um, ages eight to 10. Here we go, Sam Piper. So this is to, um, the award goes to Sharon, um, her sandpipers piece. Um, and it looks exactly like uh, these two sandpipers are walking through a spray of seawater. You really get to feel the sort of liveliness of this piece. Um, a really great depiction of a scene that, that many of us are, um, are familiar with. And I feel like I can actually smell the, the fresh salt air just looking at it. So, so well done, Shannon. That's really, really great work. And then, oh yeah, I should do a little round of applause for each one, lovely. Then I'm really thrilled to be able to also announce this category. Is this a new category? I'm not sure. I don't remember it from last year, but it's a very cool one. So it's the most unusual artwork, um, which really fit, fits in a little bit with the theme we had for the Threatened Species Bake Off this year, which was about unloved um, and, and sort of, you know, the less, lesser known creatures. So we got some interesting, interesting um, entries in this category as well. So um, first place goes to um, Hug the Slug by Griffin, age 12. And I really love this category because the creativity of these pieces are, are just sort of out of this world. Look at that. Um, so so Griffin's really highlighted a species that, that many people would not know about, even though it's a, a nationally listed threatened species, or that they even might think is a little bit gross when people ordinarily think of slugs. Um, and, but I think this is a really clever piece because it's got this striking contrast, which captures your attention to the hidden but really, really unmissable, mes um, unmissable message here. And they're just, they're just such cool creatures, these slugs, and they're actually really large. Like I think they're about 20 centimetres long. So they're a most unusual beast. And then the final award um, I'd like to make is the runner up um, to Tig for this category, who's nine. And so last award from me tonight goes for Memories of Lost Birds. Um, congratulations, Tig. Um, in this most unusual category. So this is a really beautiful artwork about how without action, future generations may not be able to see particular plants and animals and will have to imagine them instead. And it's a really powerful reminder that we all have a responsibility to safeguard our threatened species so that future generations can see and enjoy them like we do today. So, so well done to the winners and to the runner ups, runners ups, I don't know how to say that, on, on some really stunning and, and interesting um, artworks this year. Great, great job, everyone. Thank you, Lola, back to you. Thanks, Fiona. Up next, I'm delighted to reintroduce Josie Alec, 
to present the best artworks from Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children. Thanks so much, Bronte. Um, I am so honoured today to be here, um, the very first ever uh, First Nations art piece um, in this competition. It's great. It's it's really amazing um, to see the connection that everybody, all the children have to, to the country and to the plants and the animals and the amazing imaginations and artwork that, that uh, are coming, that have come out are, are really great. Um, it actually shows the intentions um, of the generations and the strength uh that lies in our future so it's really really um it's really amazing to see that and um it's it gives us it brings me a lot of hope as well that we've got you guys coming from behind and uh you're going to be the next ones you know doing this sort of work so it's amazing looking after our plants and animals on that note um i would like to firstly give a um a big big shout out to all of the all of the kids that have uh, put artwork in this competition. It is, uh, like I said, you're amazing. The the artwork's fantastic. And I will, yes, Lola, absolutely. And I will um, introduce the uh, the first uh, place of, for the Indigenous um, Best Artwork from the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. And it goes to Leo, who's age 12. And Leo has done a goanna. Um, and when you have a look at this goanna, you'll see why Leo's 12 and um, you can see the intricacies and all of the stories that are written on the, the back of the goanna that, uh, you know, comes out of the mines and um, the goanna is actually on the ground and you can see the tracks that have come before uh, on the sides. And a, a funny thing about goannas is when you track goannas um, and you see the footprints there, the footprints are actually going the other way because goannas don't walk like this. They have their, they turn their back, their hands to the back. So when they walk there, it looks like they're actually walking the other way. They're really tricky. So um, this is an amazing, amazing picture. And I like to say, a goanna is actually my spirit animal as well. So, um, and we call it a guru mandal in, in our language. So, and this is just amazing. And, uh, you know, fantastic that this is, this, you know, this is going to, you know, go on for, for a long time and, and people are going to see the, the imaginations and the hearts and minds of our young people. So that's great. And the second one is our, um, is Wayabu. And this is a number, um, what, yeah, the Wayabu number. And this is by Olivia. And Olivia's nine years old. This is amazing. And the number, you know, you see the number under the ground, um, and it looks like the number it's pretty protected under there and you know that they come out during the um night time and um very well depicted the the stripes on its back um all of the, the its protections and maybe it's you know it's home and and uh where it lives uh, underneath the ground and it's um quite marvelous and by a nine-year-old fantastic and the caliber of the work is is great and i'm going to reiterate what uh paul had said art and heart they are so close, they go together and it disproves it. Um, so thanks so much. And over to you, Lola and Bronte. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Oh, thank you. And now to ACS campaign director, Paul Sinclair, will announce some the next category. Thank you. Thanks, Lola. Um, so this category these is for best written work and best written work for ages between five and seven is Magic Blossoms and Bandicoot Friends by Suri, age seven. And I, th I think Suri nails it by saying, uh, nature is like a big, big magic story. Um, ain't that the truth, Suri? That's fantastic. Um, amazing writing, um, beautiful image. Um, the best written work for ages eight to 10, um, uh, Wings of Night by Poppy. Two very different styles of writing, a really beautiful story. Um, Poppy, um, hoot hoot to you. Um, and then best written work for ages 11 to 12. Um, Extraordinary Whale Sharks by, by Lexi, aged 12. Again, a very different piece of writing and a beautiful image. Um, well done, Suri, Poppy and Lexi. Fantastic work and really inspiring. 
Back to you, Lola and Bronte. Thanks, Paul. Up next, we've got our CEO, Kelly, who will be introducing the winners of Best Artwork ages 11 to 12. Thank you, team. Um, and I am so glad I am not a judge for this competition because I would not be able to make the decisions that have been made. Incredible work. And that continues with this category, the best artwork for ages 11 and 12. And I am uh, very excited to announce the winner of that category, which is Kathy, who's 11 years old, and she has created a beautiful artwork of a box jellyfish of which is a creature I don't want to get too close to in my life, um, but this is such a beautiful uh, piece of art around uh, the box jellyfish. I do love the colours in there. I love the darkness of it. It makes me feel like I'm in the ocean uh, with the box jellyfish. So it's amazing, Cathy, that you have done this work. Thank you so much. It's very beautiful. In second place in uh, this category of uh, best artwork for 11 to 12 year olds goes to Cotton, who is 12, who has drawn the Indian yellow-nosed albatross. I don't really have words for this one. This is amazing um, piece of art. Um, and when I saw this one for the first time, I noticed the little, I think, tear um, in the eye of of the animals, which helps us all understand uh, the plight that nature faces. Um, and also, I think the love that we have for wildlife in Australia. So well done, Cotton. This is an absolutely magnificent um, piece of art. Thank you so much. And last but not least, I think last, I should have checked that there was no one after this. This, um, as I said, very hard to judge winners. So every year we have a People's Choice Award. Um, and this year, the winner of the People's Choice Award is Brianna, who is 12 and who has drawn for us the Eastern Curlew, which is another incredible piece of work. I love the colours in this one. Um, and actually, I love the Eastern Curlew. It's a, it's a really important species that travels the world, migrates all the way from Siberia down to Australia and right now we're trying to protect the place in which it lands or one of the places in which it lands um, in Moreton Bay um, from a big development uh, on, on Moreton Bay that might destroy their home there. I think that we will be successful in protecting that place um, and people like Brianna are going to help us do that by helping people see um, these beautiful species that we love and that we need to protect. So congratulations, Brianna, for your People's Choice Award and to all the winners today. Thanks, Kelly. Now we've come to the end of the award ceremony and this event, so I just want to say an enormous congratulations to all of our winners today and a huge thank you again to everybody who's joined us and to everyone who has helped to make Wild at Art so fantastic for yet another year. Stay creative and we'll see you next time.